Stumpers, what's going on? We're back with another segment of Foot Stuff with Luso Maniac back on the camera today. So we are fucked. We have Perry Black returning, recording from his phone. It's a real dysfunctional pod. I woke up from a nap. So this should be very, very toxic and poisonous all at once. Guys, thank you very much for, uh, I guess, attending today. Perry, please unmute your mic. Well, no, no, I had to just mute it real quick so I, because I didn't want it to be disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think uh, I think we can get the disrespectful stuff out of the way, so we're going to break down some EPL. <laughs> Luckily, we're at the international break, so Everton and Man U cannot blow any more points, which is fantastic. Uh, we got the first result we're going to break down is – actually, no, I, I wanted to more make it a, a broad thing. The only top five club in Europe, or sorry, in England, that got points this weekend was Manchester City. Crazy, isn't it? That's insane. No. Oh, man. That got all three. Sorry, that got all three. That got insane. all three points. That which is insane, right? So this this did feel like a little bit of an upset week in some aspects, and the games were breaking down. We'll sort of show that. Uh, the first one is Manchester City dominating Man U. In Old Trafford, two nothing. I have to say that was probably the poorest performance I've seen from Man U in a calendar year. Would you agree, Perry? <laughs> what? Nah, bro. I've seen I've seen worse. I've seen worse. Uh, I've seen worse. I and and you know what? It has all happened like even within this year before that City game too. So, um, like I said for uh, last week. What was going to happen? They were going to get absolutely dominated by these guys, and I'm not surprised by it one bit. So didn't didn't Casper post a a stat where all, the ball was only in the put in the box four times by Manchester? Is that is that correct, Rick? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, United only got four touches inside the box uh, the four whole touches, game. Yeah. I, I I feel like City got that in the first two minutes of the game. Yeah. Those four oh touches. yeah. It takes 30 seconds for that to happen when it comes to City on the ball, man. They're absolutely well oiled. They are they are. Like I, I think that, that it's very important. I'm glad you said that. Is that as much as this is a shit on Manchester United pod week to week, like City's fucking <laughs> excellent, right? City City's a very, very good football club. And that could have easily been four or five nil, right? Easy. Yeah. And the fact I, it wasn't go ahead. Right? I think uh, Cancelo was my man of the match. I feel like he played a great game. And I felt like if you had uh, you have Foden and Cancelo on that left side, that the, whoever's defending on that side, it's like it's so hard to figure out which yeah. one of them is going to go forward, which one of them is going to stay back. That Like that left side for Man City is lethal, I felt. And it's then like you also have Bernard, Bernardo. You had Bernardo like switching back and forth between the, the fake nine and the, in, on, right, on the right side. It was... It was Pretty fun to watch. You know, it, it's so funny, man, because <laughs> when you look at the formation that all these decided to start playing now, the 3-5-2, a lot of people will call it a defensive formation, right? And when you do look at it, it's actually one of the most stable formations. Like, it's very structured if you know how to coach it. We're looking at a team that's playing a formation that doesn't, like, that has a coach that doesn't know how to coach it, doesn't even know what the hell he's doing in it. And I felt bad, I guess, for Wamba Saka on the weekend because just like you said about the left side, he was getting killed all game long. Like that side was – they were just attacking that side constantly. And when uh, City scored a first goal, who was that – who was part of the fault there? Bruno at first because he didn't, you know, block, he didn't block the cross. Like this guy's just standing there looking at the guy, crossed it in, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And you know, obviously, it's just he did the, to not. You said it best, Barry. He the refusal, the effort was not there to close that down. That was more the yeah. issue, right? Like, if, yeah, if you attempt at it, and the ball still gets gets crossed in. You can live with it. It's an effort. It, it looked like very minimal effort defensively. Very. Yo, it was crazy, man. And then when the second goal came in after De Gea had like twenty stops in a row. Like, he was saving our asses during that game. And, you know, the, the second goal, you can 
slightly blame him, but I'd put 75% on it on uh, Luke Shaw because oh, Luke yeah. Shaw had, yeah, he, he should have cleared that from the beginning. I don't know what the hell happened there. Yo, listen, I, all I got to say is that it the goal, the goal was almost identical in a way. Like, exact, they knew exactly where to attack because they knew that we were going to play the stupid formation that we don't know how to play. You know what I mean? And, like, it's Pep Guardiola. It's Pep. He knows where to attack. And and you've seen it all game. You've seen it all game. You know, Even though De Bruyne had a sh- shitty game, the rest of the team, so good. You know, so the, good. the Luke Shaw goal, again, is one of those things that maybe a, a top-of-the-table club could get away with that sort of mental lapse. It, he definitely thought the ball was going through. He didn't think – it was going to be touched beyond him. He didn't want to give up and see the corner. But it's again, it's, awful. it's an effort thing, right? That's an effort play where you yeah. just make contact, clear it. They, they outsize Man City on all set pieces of that nature. You can live with a set piece at that point. To just leave that to chance. And yeah, the guy, I guess, is going to get some blame for that. He was incredible. He made some save. I was like, holy shit. And it, it was a bog. Oh. But it's funny though, like <clears throat> I don't I don't I don't know what coach thinks that he can go into a game against Manchester City without players who know how to retain possession and who can pass the ball around properly and keep the ball. You got you got McTominay playing, you got Fred playing, Luke Shaw, Maguire. <clears throat> These guys are awful players. These guys are awful players and they they're not the sort of players that you need in a possession-based game or at least in a in a system where you can retain the ball and then maybe put an attack together we can't do that we can't do that we just have you, to pick hope and pray that something will happen do you like bali that bali being suited there bailey, bailey yeah bailey, bailey's always been our best central defender from from ever since he came in, he's always been our best central defender, but he's never been able to stay healthy. That's the only thing, right? He can't stay healthy, but if he was able to stay healthy and play consistently, like we would have way like we would have a better record as a team as a whole because he is a very good defender. He's rash, but he's a good defender. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put my foot on your throat emotionally. Pogba approximately out two months. I don't see how you're going to make the next two months without uh, a, a sacking of Ole here. I, I don't know <laughs> with the, with your favorite man, you guys being out two months, it's it's bad. It's bad times. But the international break is when we predicted he gets sacked, so we'll see. Yeah, but like you know what, I, I don't think anything's going to happen if we're honest with ourselves. Like he's not going anywhere, and with the Pugba thing, like if I was Pugba, I'd want to sit out for two months too, if I could. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm gonna milk this injury as long as I can, until something truly happens. If 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 like the board can, you know, wake up and realize that the direction that we're going is the wrong direction, and we gotta like turn this shit around. Somebody's gotta adjust. Uh, I think Rick, would you agree? This is the shock of the weekend. Is Chelsea drawing one one with Burnley? Uh, yeah. I didn't watch much of that game, but. But yeah, that, it was it was a pretty big shock. I think Chelsea had most of the ball the whole game, and then they just gave up the lead. But uh, yeah, Rele- relegation zone team to give up uh, two points there. That's something we're going to be looking at in you know maybe in a few months. Being like, fuck those are, those are points you could not afford to lose there. Uh, yeah, but that's Burnley though, you know, like Burnley is that one team that a lot of the top teams always have issues with, except for City. City always ends up smashing these guys 5 nothing. We're, but they play yeah. the English style, you know, that 4-4-2 uh, passion and desire and all that bullshit. You know who's actually, who's apparently had, I, 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 can't, I can't attest to it as I don't uh, watch a ton of Chelsea, who's had a good season is Reese James. Oh, Reese yeah. James has been, Reese James is really apparently coming to his own. Is, is he... Is he what you thought he was going to be? Is he, is he sort of more morphing into the player you thought he would be? Were you big on him, Barry? Um, I didn't – obviously, I didn't really know much about him until he kind of started getting more regular games or, like – and oh, then you start seeing this guy as a right back or a right wing back. 
even as a right center back, he's good. He, he's he's just a very good player. He's just a very good player. And I think what what is that's like five and five or four and four, something like yeah. that. Like four goals, four assists. He he's very good offensively and defensively. So, I mean, Chelsea they they know how to produce good young players that come out of their academy. Um, it's just all about whether or not they actually get the chance in playing for Chelsea. That's the different thing. So you know he's good because he's playing for Chelsea. Oh fuck yeah, he's yeah. he's he's a mainstay there. So obviously he's a solid yeah. player. Yeah, you know he's good. It's it's a shame when those top clubs drop those those points. It's it's real sad. It, it makes me shed a tear. Uh, <laughs> Everton draws zero zero against Spurs. Uh, I unfortunately so, walk. wait. Which is the top club here? <laughs> where, where? No, no. Oh, this is obviously Everton. No, no. This one. Yeah, I, this I was Everton. Ref- I was more. I was more referencing Chelsea losing two <laughs> points. I love that. That was probably my favorite result from over the weekend or yeah. the next game. Uh, Everton and Spurs didn't have a lot of action. Uh, no. I I have to say, I feel like where Carlson's been like subtraction by addition. I look knew it. Different. Yeah, look different with him back. And it's it's been really uncomfortable. Where even even in this match, they definitely they, they controlled a section in this game. Or it was like even if they weren't really producing, they, they were in control. And in the later stages, <laughs> like maybe minute seventy five through about eighty five, Ta- Donahem had this spurt where there was a lot of open field. Uh, Holgate fucking stinks. I'm so so out on Holgate. So out and, and not because of the red, he's he's just such a clumsy, clumsy soccer player. Uh Tottenham in a post. Pickford got beat from deep, and luckily a great post. And every time he, he fucked up a net, I always I always think of you, Perry, and the lack of love for Pickford. And he's just so overrated. Because if he was really good, right? If he was really good, he would not be playing for Everton. Yeah. Right, and it, <laughs> like I, that's 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 what I think of him. Like I don't think he's a he's a good keeper. Like okay, when he plays for England, you know something happens, and all of a sudden he grows a couple more inches in his arms, and he's able to save some more. But like yeah. most of the time, nah, man, I, I don't really like Pickford as a, a keeper. I don't think he's that good at all. I uh, I can't I can't be upset if you had told me like you know. Recency bias, I love the point, obviously. But if you had told me at the beginning of the season you beat Spurs to open the season and you draw with them a second time, I'm happy with getting four points off Spurs. Very happy. There's other there's other matchups where we have not fared as well. And I know after this international break, our record cranks up. Did you watch anything of Spurs-Everton, Rick? Yeah, I, I felt like Everton was the better team, to be honest. But I think yeah. Tottenham, only, Tottenham only showed up. In the, like you said, in the 70th minute, 75th or whatever. And I think their first shot on net, which was the post you're talking about, was only in the 87th minute. So yeah. Everton played pretty good defensively. So I, I think, uh, what did you think of, like, did the Spurs look different to you with Conte? Did, did it look like a very different structure? Yeah. Well, yeah, they look a lot more defensive, I would guess, I would say. But, uh, but I also think Everton played a good game. I'll give more props to Everton than to Tottenham's defensive ways. Yeah, there, there's still there's still some guys on Spurs. There's still some dogs. Like it, it's it's not a pushover team. They, I think, if you were to ask a lot of EPL fans, they would predict at this moment that Spurs will finish ahead of Everton in the, uh, like in the table. So I, I can't be pissed with zero zero. Uh, I, there you go. I also feel I also feel like there should have been a penalty. For Everton, I feel like that that was a penalty. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you guys seen it. I did. I, I would be lying to. You. I was actually grocery shopping, uh, but I had flash <laughs> score up. No, I had flash score up, and there was an appeal for a penalty. And, and I said to myself, "There's zero chance we get it. There's zero. It, that it's it's not that that kind of club that gets those calls. That's just in my mind. I'm a real pessimistic person. Um, what was the play, Rick? Um. I know the I know the player got he touched the ball first, but he um, he got more of the men. So I, I feel like that should have been a penalty. It was Loris, right? It was the goalie yeah, who came yeah, out. Yeah, and, yeah, you know. yeah, it was Loris. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that was that Lloris. You know what? I thought he got the guy. Like he got I've like he got the ball like it was yeah, so it was very little. Yeah, it, it looked so faint, but and it felt like he got more of the guy than he did of the ball. So I probably would have said, yeah, you know, um, that's a penalty, but I mean game, game already, would have totally opened up. Game yeah, you already opened. know how soccer is, right? The referees, everything is just is very inconsistent, even though they have technology. It's still inconsistent. So I'm not surprised that it stayed as a nil-nil game. What final game we're going to break down, Rick? What happened to your favorite club, Liverpool? Just just cannot cannot take the hammers lightly. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. it. Uh, Bit of a shit-kicking, no? I I feel bad. I feel like I jinxed Leroy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah. with the last uh, podcast but West Ham is a good team they're now in third place yeah. so they, they have they have structure structure they know how to defend they capitalize on mistakes um I, I feel like they're a really good team Sa- Sadio Ma- Mane had a really good chance to tie the game late in the game when that when that free kick was hit I thought for sure he was going to score he took the free kick no uh I forget I think it was Alexander Arnold that took the free kick yeah, and uh, and then he he uh, headed it, but just wide, like he was a was a bad header. But I thought for he was wide open. I thought for sure he was going to score. I I can't say uh, I'm shocked by this result. I think I'm more shocked at in the score than I am the result. I thought if West Ham were to win a game like this, it'd be like a two one one nil. Uh, the score line three two means they they found some they found some holes in uh in countering, and no Antonio Eric. Eh, no Antonio or, or Harry, sorry. Our, our boy didn't score. No. But, hey, you know what's another funny thing? When I think about West Ham, I'm like, Jesse Lingard should be playing for West Ham right now. Yeah. What an absolute idiot. What an absolute idiot. Like, are you kidding me? You, yo, you knew you weren't getting game time. Why do you stay behind? Like, West Ham was doing something. Uh, last season, he as was like so you know, good with them, yeah. What yeah. if that was me? I would have said, "Hey, transfer! Like, get me, get me out of here, get me out of here as quick as I can." Because you know, there's something over at West Ham where, like, I'm very comfortable with it, and I could. So that was his choice. System. That really? was his choice. That was his choice, Perry. He make that. He made that choice. Well, like. Maybe he was told by Oli, oh, oh, we would like to have you here. I'm going to use you. But just like every other player who doesn't play under this guy, he says the same thing. Like, why would you be that stupid to, like, fall for this shit? You know, he says, oh, I'm going to stay. I'm going to play you. Oh, yeah, I'm going to play. And then he just sticks with the same guys over and over again. And he keeps on losing over and over again. So it doesn't make sense to me. That's just – it's very idiotic by Jesse Lingard, if you ask me. Like, he, yeah, he was, he was great there. He was yeah. absolutely great. Further uh, your career, man. You know what I mean? Like, think about yourself at this point of your career. I, I feel like we would all we would all admit that without him, they're not in Europa. Yeah. Without without Jesse Lingard, right? Yeah. He, was, yeah. he was that good for them. Uh, I think he scored like eight – Goals in like six games or something like that. Like, I feel like he scored crazy. against Man U. No, crazy? no, 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 because because in the loan, if you get loaned out, you can't play like, against your own team. Not even, not even in uh, in those Champions cups. League? The cups. No, not even in those cups. No. Ah, that's cool. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's just based. It's based on contract. It's whatever they put in the contract. No, but most of the time, because I've never seen. Uh, uh, a player that's been loaned out play against his old team, like in the same league, same in season. terms of the Premier League, only in terms of the Premier League. Yeah, there you go. Uh, quick recap on some other leagues. Rick, break down what happened in Portugal, please, with the three big clubs. I, th- oh, I thought you're gonna talk about Crystal Palace Wolves. Oh, yeah, we could totally oh. talk about Crystal Palace Wolves. What happened, Rick? Tell us. Oh, cool. I just I like I liked Gallagher. I was watching Gallagher. I really liked Gallagher on Crystal Palace. I feel yeah, like he, he should. Yeah, he's a, he's another Chelsea Loney. Yeah, 
I think he he should be really good in the future if he come, when he comes back. To play. He's already pretty good now, but I'm saying when he co- comes back to Chelsea, I feel like he's going to be a really a big piece for that team. Is he an Irishman? I think he's British. I think he's part of the the under seventeen England squad that won the the Euro or the World Cup. He is English. Yeah, you're right. Uh, oh shit! Look at that. Willie Zaha scored again. Tis the season. Yeah. Tis the fucking season. It's insane. Yeah. The- yo, you Show- know what? Yo, uh, Vieira, Patrick Vieira needs a lot of love, man. Vieira yeah. needs a lot of love. Like, this guy's actually got Crystal Palace playing some football right now. So, yo. I'm, I'm just shouting out Vieira. Vieira's doing a heck of a job. I, uh, they're always bitchy. The, this Crystal Palace team is always bitchy. Oh, always, always in like that mid table, they can shock a team or not. Wolves were also in complete form, right, Rick? Just that they were in form. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the Wolves, they, everybody played for the Wolves, I believe. Yemen has played, Trincao, but uh, yeah. Trincao. But Chris, 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 Crystal Palace just looks. They look like they're pretty good right now. They beat City two nothing. Wolves two nothing. They. They're doing pretty good. It, it looked like they're a good together team. And like Perry said, Patrick Vieira. They're probably going to beat us, yo. I guarantee that. <laughs> I guarantee that right now. Now can we jump into the Portuguese league, Rick? Yo, tell us about Portugal. Just not my team, though. I don't want to know about Brian. Part of the, it's part of the breakdown. There's four <laughs> big clubs in Portugal or three big clubs and then like a – a medium-sized one, and they were all in action on Sunday. Give it to us, yeah, Rick. Uh, what happened? Well, Porto cheated. They always cheat, so they <laughs> must have cheated again. So I, no, I, I, I didn't watch. I, I didn't watch the Porto game, but uh, I'm going to say they cheated, and hopefully, Stage Fright can come on and tell me otherwise. <laughs> he's the he's he's the Porto fan. Um, yeah. Did you guys watch any of that, those games, or? Dude, it's Sunday. You guys watch Sunday after one. Nope. Sunday after one, absolutely not. Sunday's football day for me. You're our Portuguese correspondent, man. Yeah, so the- Matter of fact, you're in Portugal right now. You should be in every stadium sure. telling us what's going on. Like, go okay, so then, then I'll, I'll go with uh, the for- Passage Ferreira versus Sporting. Uh, first half, Passage Ferreira looked pretty good against Sporting. But then second half, Sporting just turned on the Jets and they came out with a convincing win. Um, I want to jinx Sporting right now and say that they haven't, they've only lost two games this whole year. And they were against Ajax and Dortmund. So with me saying this, I hope they lose the next one. And then Benfica slapped Braga, Perry's team. And yeah. uh, it's basically what would happen if I played one on one against either one of you guys. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> In what, badminton? <laughs> what are you talking no, about? <laughs> football. <laughs> So, we're, so in, in the current layout, in the current layout in, in Portugal, Sporting and Porto have a point up on Benfica. Is that correct, Rick? Yeah. <laughs> and Benfica hasn't played any of the big clubs yet, right? No. But Are they playing when you're there? Uh, I'm not sure. I probably could have gone to this Braga game, but I didn't go. It's a yeah, three-hour yeah. drive. Um, yeah. Shit, you know, like, damn. <laughs> I'll go eventually. I just, it wasn't this one. They play, oh, they play Christmas time. I will definitely make it a point of watching that. And I'll, I'll support the local farmers of Ontario in honor of watching the Portuguese league and just the farmer, the farmers united. Uh, Listen, you... we're a part of the Farmers United too, man. So don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so we I also think... we have a we have a player in our team called Everton on Benfica. So... And boy just scores. And the boy just scores. He got two goals, two assists this last game. Oh shit, nice. He scored more than Everton in the past two games. How about that? Your audio is all messed up. Mine? There you go. Now you're good. This is going to be the greatest episode ever to edit. <laughs> Yo, um, I have no idea what the fuck is going on today. No clue. It's, it's literally been one of those days. 
<laughs> before we jump into a segment Rick created, I wanted to look at just upcoming World Cup qualifying and some matches that sort of stood out to me. And you guys tell me what you think. Uh, obviously, it's a very Portuguese heavy podcast. Portugal versus Ireland, 245 on the 11th, which is Thursday. Uh, has to be has to be three points here for Portugal as they are a point behind Serbia, but with the game in hand. Another one that I was looking at that I'm like, oh, that could be like somewhat interesting. It's in CONCACAF, Canada and Costa Rica. When is the that? Big, uh, let me confirm. I know, I know they, they they're picking back up. I they flagged it. It's, it's Saturday, November 13th. Oh, we are in Edmonton, baby. Soft it's a late game. What's the weather? What's the weather like? Is it snowing in Edmonton? I hope so. <laughs> I really yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. Are there any Costa Ricans I've seen snow <laughs> in Costa Rica? Like, come on, man. Let, let's let's use it to our advantage. It's in the, it's in Commonwealth Stadium where the uh the Edmonton Elks play. Oh and yeah. You need all you need all three, all three against Costa Rica. And then the following Tuesday, Mexico rolls into town. That is that is you have to steal a point there. That's a massive I, game. That is uh, like Kyoto. we need that. Imagine if we won, Jay. Oh fuck! It would be it would be fantastic. <laughs> I, I would love I would love I would love all my friends to get stuck, all my Portuguese friends to get stuck, and be in this country and not support Canada winning over their Portuguese their Portuguese roots. It would make me sick. <laughs> Yo, listen. Like I said, it would just be dope being able to like. You know, you can walk around with two of them now, right? You got your Canadian one and your Portuguese one, or I could have the Canadian one and the Ghanaian one. Double, you know what I mean? Double so. tats. Speaking of Ghana, Ghana plays on Thursday. They make the trip down to Ethiopia. Oh, shit. And, and Sunday, they're hosting South Africa. Uh, they are, they're looking, I, th- I believe, top two in each group move on to the next stage. Yeah. They're cruising out of their stage right now. They're oh three zero and one. Uh, but we're not we're not first right now. From the last time I checked, right? You're we're second, second. yeah, second behind South, South Africa. Africa. Yeah, we got we got to be able to beat Ethiopia. I know it's Ethiopia, I know, but like sometimes, man, this Ghanaian team, yo, they they piss me off, yo. Sometimes they come up with the stupidest results, and I'm like, what the hell? What's going on? Like we, yo, we're talented. We're what's, not there yet, but we're talented. What's the, what's the temperature? Are they are they supposed to qualify out Africa, Perry, or would it be sort of a surprise? What would you compare it to in like fucking Concacaf? What's the, what's the comparable? Like, are, are they are they expected to come out? Man, in your opinion, I I always expect them to 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 qualify for the World Cup, right? Like, we're the I believe we're still. The African nation has been the furthest in the World Cup, I believe, until we got screwed over by Uruguay. Yeah. But, yeah, like, no, I expect us to come out of it. I expect us. As everybody I else, like, I don't know, <clears throat> but I do. I feel like you guys have a tough group, though, like being in with South Africa. But how South does the fucking group team, work? yeah. How does, the group Sorry? Thing work? How does it work? Do two teams come out? Do does one team come out? It's something I'm interested in. I believe it's uh, so. There's ten groups, right? Let's so the, those the, the first place the first place team goes, and then maybe I would say there's a playoff for like four other teams for the se- four best second places or something like that. I have to I have to search that up though. So now we're in the second stage of the Africa qualifying. So it looks like promotion teams finish on equal points at the end of the season. Score difference be a tiebreaker. Looks like just the top team. Oh shit! So they got it. They got to get all three from Ethiopia and South Africa. That's a big deal. Oh man, Perry. Shit, you're gonna have to get your Portugal tattoo, buddy. <laughs> oh, someone else is. Oh, is something wrong with your microphone, Perry? You don't want to chirp? Oh, I'm getting sick and tired of this shitty ass fucking phone, man. And I have no idea what the hell is going on. You know, today is like 
<laughs> we gotta have a redo on the whole this day, is, man. Like, this, wow. That's what I was about to say. No, there's absolutely no redo, guys, because my internet will shit again on my face, and I cannot take two shits in the face. I, we're just, we're, you know what? This is just showing anybody that listens to this pod, to this pod. When we start doing this live, the content will be explosive. Ricardo may walk out once in a while, but we won't have any of these issues. That's the key. You know what trips me out too on Zoom is like I'll see Rick and he'll like freeze, and I'm like, oh shit, did I freeze again? Like it's the it's the most infuriating thing because Perry and I are constantly moving, and so I, in the end, it's always Rick's fault. It's not my internet's fault. Um, <laughs> Ricardo, why don't you explain this next segment? Explain this next idea. Yeah, so um, basically, like, there's a lot of leagues. Soccer is the best sport in the world. Like, um, there's a there's a league in every continent, basically, in this world. And uh, there's so much to touch on. And I came up with, uh, we, we came up with an idea just basically to have uh, one team from a league that were, it's not the EPL. And uh, I chose Roma today. So basically, I'm just going to say something good about Roma and something bad about Roma. Uh, and uh, so basically, Roma uh, this week, this, this weekend, they played a, uh, they're in sixth place in the Serie A. They lost 3-2 three, three to Venezia, which is a team that just got uh, promoted. And uh, hold on a second. Roma, Roma, Roma sitting in sixth, and Venezia currently sitting in 15th after this result. You're right. Venezia is recently promoted. Not a great team by any stretch. And, Rick, I'll cut you off. Roma was no, leading 1. Roma was leading 2-1 as well. At half, yeah. Yeah. So basically, basically the thing that I was going to say is just the striker, T- Tommy Abraham, I feel like he could be a top five player or top five striker eventually. I know it's, it's a bold take, but the way he plays, uh, he gives me Lukaku vibes. He, uh, he had a slow decline after his Aston Villa season in 2018, where he scored 26 goals. But I do believe that he can get to a top five striker. The only thing in his way is Harry Kane, because Harry Kane is the main striker, the captain of England, in for... Uh, Tammy to be able to become that top striker, he has to overtake that. And then uh, the the sh- I'm shitting on Mourinho on Roma because I'm happy to see him lose, and I hope he keeps losing and retires. So I I know Perry's much more educated on this, so I'll just get my quick two cents in before I throw it to him. Uh, I think Tammy Abraham fell into a weird hole at Chelsea last year. He constantly was having to rotate with Giroud. Then the coaching, the coaching change and all that. So I think it was nice for him to have a fresh start, even though it's under a very mediocre coach. And I'm with you. Winning has turned into a very mediocre coach where, you know, it's been sort of a, it was a, it's a valley, so to speak. Uh, so I agree with both of those takes. Perry, what do you think? Yo, Mourinho, that's the thing. Oh man, Mourinho. Like I really did like him. Like a decade ago, you know, he started to go down as soon as he, um, as soon as his stint at Real Madrid started to go down. Once that went down, then he went back to Chelsea and it wasn't good at Chelsea. Went to United, wasn't good at United, Spurs, nope. Um, what do you call it? Uh, now Roma, Roma, it's not looking pretty over at Roma right now. Like, you know what? They're probably thinking that they were better off with their previous manager. I, I would be like, I, that's I would what be they're li- probably thinking. I would be lying to you. I thought I thought they were going to be like a, a Europa League, possibly Champions League team in this first season. It's looking rough. Yeah, because that's Mourinho, right? That's the reputation that he's uh, earned, right? People think that oh, okay, if if Mar- if you get Mourinho in you're going to compete. Like, no matter what, all of his teams compete, whether that's being competitive or actually competing for a fucking title, right? He always gives you one of the two, if not both. But he hasn't really been able to replicate his, like, glory days since... Really, I... I guess, yeah, since Real Madrid. Because I think he... His, his glory days were Porto and Chelsea and Inter Milan. Yeah, but 
I'm saying since Real Madrid, since the end of Real Madrid, it, it, you could see like the downfall for uh, Mourinho. Yeah. You could see the downfall for Mourinho, and it, and a lot of it really came from man management, right? He was he was seen as someone that was a great man manager back then when he was younger, right? Because he would, I guess, uh, put his arm around players and understand where players are coming from. But the older he got, he just, I guess he started to get more bitter, more like um, uh, hating on the players a bit more, you know? And and you start seeing it. You start seeing it play out in public a lot. And I, it, it doesn't look great at all because oh. Jose Mourinho is actually one of the greatest coaches to ever uh, coach. But the way his antics are just a bit much, but, and also his tactics and how he is as a coach right now, it seems as if he's been pushed all the way back. Like it's old school. It's not the, it's not what's in right now. If you, if you know what I'm saying. The only thing I don't want is him going to coach Portugal. A lot of people say that like just go to retirement. That's what I'm, I'm saying to Mourinho. Don't, don't go to Portugal and coach the international team. Yeah, but it's funny, eh? Because, like, we talk about Roma and how they are, yet they're only, like, four points away from a Champions League spot at this moment, right? Yeah, but losing losing to Venezia is pretty tough. Yeah, that, that is tough. That they is haven't tough. even gone into the Milans of the schedule yet. They, they haven't mm-hmm. gone into the, the thick of it. So, I, Rick's right. It's it, Those drop points after having leads – I think I think one thing I wanted to mention too is he does not feel like he has really adjusted with the game. Yeah, feels like yeah, feels like yeah, the game's yeah. changed, right? The game has definitely evolved into something different when he was in his prime, and I think it's very, very. I'm not gonna say hipster. It's very much one of those things like yeah, he was in his prime during his Chelsea and Inter days and his Porto days. I didn't really watch soccer the way I do today. And sort of my idea of him is he has refused to adjust. And against certain, you know, systems, his system just gets picked apart. It just gets absolutely dissected. And you have to have a counter to that. Almost like playing soccer, right? Playing chess is you have to have a counter if someone if someone's aggressively coming at you. Um, I, I, I've always said I would love for him to be the Portuguese national coach. So I'll, I'll deal with any hate that he gets. I would love to see him there. If he brought us, if he brought us a, a Euro or a World Cup at any point, it'd be like I'd shut myself up. You know what? Honestly, I think Jose Mourinho would be a great international manager. I think his style of play works perfectly in tournament, in tournament style. Yep. Yeah, hundred percent. I feel like Jose Mourinho would be a great international manager. So if I was him, I'd think about it. But I would do it when Cristiano Ronaldo leaves. Right, because oh. you know, you know the clash. Cristiano's Cristiano, Mourinho's Mourinho. <laughs> like that would be some crazy shit. At you know, because uh, it just seems like Jose just doesn't care anymore. So where, I don't think Cristiano takes shit from nobody. Where would you guys like? I guess preseason in Syria. I feel like they are exactly sitting where I thought they would in like yeah. that six to eight zone. And that's Rick. Is that just more an indicator of where Mourinho's at? Is that more like a, a a gavel hitting hitting the board, being like, "Yeah, that's the type of manager he is. He's not going to pull that club up to a Champions League spot." Or is it just roster? Does he need a year with the roster? I, I think Roma got him to be in the top three, top four spots, though. Like they, it's just I don't know. I just. I don't think he's able to get to the players anymore, in my opinion. There was a point, I think, uh, he basically said, you guys don't even belong in the in the third division of Italy to the players. Yeah, Just pretty fucked to say. It's fucking rigid. Super, super rigid. And yeah. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, Rick. There is, we have a, a stumper in Roma. We have a stumper in Roma that does not like our swearing. Is that true? Uh, no, no, it was a, a Liverpool fan oh. that listened to the podcast. A cuck, a cuck. Uh, otherwise known as a cuck. A Liverpool fan is a <laughs> sorry, a, a Liverpool gentleman. He's an older man, too. So. Okay, sorry. So a Liverpool gentleman. A cuck is <laughs> the other one that you were talking about earlier that jinxed. 
Uh, yeah. We, I've been working on the swearing. I think I counted today. I'm at six. I'm oh, more this than one. that. I counted more than that from you. <laughs> <laughs> this one. This one's been tough, though. The internet's sort of thrown me a curveball. The guy from yeah. Liverpool is probably hacking the system, making yeah. me swear more. <laughs> That's how it's feeling. He's trying to screw us both over because we're his biggest rivals, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and and Rick's been jinxing his squad. So he's like, yeah, screw that podcast. They need to struggle. They need to really sweat this out. And Jay's got to work on editing tonight. It's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, this, one, this, one was, this one was tough. Yeah, I wanted to thank both of you guys for making some time today to do this. I wanted to thank Tech Savvy, my internet supporter. Uh, got, Stumpers, please like, support, comment, give us your feedback, whether it's good, bad, ugly. Uh, shout out to Dylan for the music. If it does get edited in, we shall see. And uh, yeah, please enjoy. Take it easy. Go Canada. Go Canada, go. Hello, Alfonso. Ricardo, you couldn't even say it, eh? You're such an ass. We just passed a foreign city sign, your feet on the dash. You got your favorite top on, I got my foot on the